What's up, Navigation Traders? Today is Friday, December 29th. Hope everybody's having a great holiday week. Hope you had a good week of trading. Today is the last trading day of 2017. So hope you had a great year of trading. Really looking forward to 2018. Hopefully we can get some more volatility in this market. It's been a very interesting, fairly one-way directional market, especially in stocks, which is not always the best for us, but we've definitely held our own. Uh, but really looking forward to 2018, not to mention all the cool stuff that we have coming out for you, our members. Uh, if you haven't already seen the announcement, uh, and you're watching this video, and this is the first time you've heard it, if you're in your members area, you'll find that you've got access to every single one of our courses now. So we just, we automatically upgraded your membership, no additional cost or anything to you. So uh, happy holidays to you for that. And, and basically going forward, uh, we're, we're turning it into what we're calling our pro membership, where you get not only the alerts, but all of the uh, training courses that we've that we've created. The cool thing for you as members, A, you're locked in at the $49 a month. So as long as you're an active member, you're going to stay locked in at that low cost. And as we come out with additional courses, which we're working on a couple right now that'll come out later this year, those are automatically going to be added to your members area. No additional cost to you just for being a member. So I hope you appreciate that. We're really trying to provide more and more value to our members. And then uh, for those who uh, can sign up before January 5th, so if you have any trading buddies that have been kind of on the fence on, on trying to get going and learn, uh, let them know about this. If they go to navigationtrading.com forward slash pro dash membership, if they sign up before January 5th, they're gonna lock in that same low rate of $49 a month or $4.99 a year. And because uh, after January 5th, the price is going up to 99 bucks a month. So if you have any, uh, like I said, if you have any trading buddies who are on the fence, let them know about that before it's too late or before the price goes up, I should say. Uh, let's jump into the alerts for this week. So obviously a shortened week with December 25th being Christmas. So our first trade started on Tuesday the 26th. And uh, the first trade was an opening adjusting trade in soybeans. So we added an iron condor in soybeans in the March cycle with 59 days to expiration. And as I mentioned, if, even though I sent this out as an adjustment, uh, if you don't have a current soybean position, this could also be considered as a new trade. So if we go to the platform, here's that trade. So it's still very centered, not much going on there, moving pretty slow. And then we've also got, let me reset this here so I can uncheck those boxes. So we've also got this, uh, uh, the put side vertical of what was an iron condor. So need a little bit of up movement in soybeans to benefit that piece. We've had a pretty sizable down move in soybeans. So it's coming back a little bit today. If we can get a little bit of a pop up, we'll take care of that piece and, uh, and we'll continue to manage and monitor soybeans. So working our way back really nicely. Obviously we had that huge move earlier in the year in soybeans. Uh, let's see if we go to the actual the full chart in soybeans, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, you know, this big down move here that we've been working our way out of, almost back to even on this one. Uh, but that's, that's what happens sometimes if you have those huge one directional moves, you're going to be in the trade longer, managing, adjusting your way out, but that's working out nicely. So still, still continue to love to trade the grains, uh, especially when implied volatility is fairly low in a lot of other symbols. Next trade was an opening trade in EWW, which is the Mexican ETF. Uh, IV popped up to 58 at the time we put this on. Uh, I also mentioned if you prefer to find risk, you could trade an iron condor. With low price symbols like this, you know, under 50 bucks, you just gotta be careful about, you know, if, you, if when you buy the wings, you're lowering the amount of credit you receive. So you just need to make sure it's worth the transaction costs and the, the risk that you're taking on the trade. Uh, so let's go to EWW and check that out. You can see the implied volatility has did definitely come down. Intraday it was up to whatever I said, 58, but it's uh, but it's come down since then. If we take a look, uh, still very centered here, well within our range on EWW. So nothing else to do at this point except for wait. 
Next trade was another opening trade, and we did this in forward slash ZN, which is the 10-year notes. Uh, IB percentile with TLT, which is the corresponding ETF, it got up to 56, so we put this trade on. And if we take a look at the analysis tab on ZN, you can see we've got a little bit of profit here. Uh, not enough to take off yet, so we'll continue to monitor and watch that. If we take a look at TLT, the corresponding ETF, to look at the implied volatility, you can see it's, it's come down, it's contracted nicely, so now we just need a little bit more time to pass and for price to stay in a decent range. So on this alert, I also mentioned that, you know, you could do a short strangle or iron condor in forward slash ZB, ZN, or TLT. So TLT, I just didn't like the amount of credit, didn't like the risk reward we would get in that. Uh, ZB is a little bit bigger product, so I, 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 I prefer trading the one in the middle, which is ZN. So you get a really good risk reward, really good credit, and, uh, and, and you can still stay at a small manageable size. On this one, we sent out the alert at two contracts. Uh, so if you're trading a smaller account, you could even do just one, or you could look to uh, you know, buy the wings and do an iron condor in any of those three symbols would have worked for this trade. Next trade was another opening trade in Microsoft. So in this, we put on a short put vertical. This is a bullish play. And part of the reason was it's it set up nicely for a bullish directional trade, which I'll show you in a minute. But also, you know, our, our portfolio started to get a little bit too short biased. So to help balance that out, we wanted to add some long delta to help balance it out a bit. So if we take a look at Microsoft, and we're gonna be releasing this uh, this charting piece, this charting indicator later this year. Uh, but basically, what we're looking at here is, you know, it's had a decent run up, it's kind of pulling back. Uh, I won't get into it now, but we've got this these little dots that kind of help potentially signify a continuation pattern in that stock. And so we just need a little bit of a pop up back up to about 87 even is all we need. And at that point, you know, we'll book, I want to book about 150 $185 somewhere in that uh, vicinity for a profit in here before I take that off. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in QQQ. So we added an iron condor in the queues. And, uh, and, and as I mentioned, if you don't have a position in queues, this could have been considered for a new trade as well. So if we take a look at queues, you can see this iron condor is still very centered. Uh, nothing, nothing too much going on there yet. We've also got these other pieces in queues, which is a 155-158 call spread, which was put, uh, previously part of an iron condor. So we need a little bit of a down movement, more down movement in the queues to benefit that piece. And then a vet, a very, another very similar piece from a former iron condor, which is the 154-157 call spread, again needing a little bit of downside to benefit that piece. Next trade was a closing trade in FXI. So we closed the strangle in FXI for a nice profit. Uh, if we go to the charts real quick for FXI, you can see we got a nice contraction in implied volatility. We had made a couple adjustments to this trade. In fact, if we just go to the closing trades tab, you can see we made uh, one, two, three adjustments before we close that out, but ended up booking a nice profit of $356 on that trade. And while we're on these these closed trades, we can kind of scan through here. I'll be sending out a uh, an update on performance. And you can see that, that was a $356 winner, Adobe a $98 winner, SPX calendar spread 165, GLD Iron Condor booked 120 bucks there. Uh, EEM 116 bucks, uh, an Adobe earnings butterfly 343, uh, 10-year note short strangle 156, uh, EWZ 147. These are all December trades. Baidu 200 dollars profit there. Adobe post earnings iron condor. This is the one that got us with that surprise announcement that came out. We ended up just taking a loss here and, and booking that loss of 587, and then. Uh, lastly, EWW for 135. So another great month of, of trades. And by the way, we've uh, produced a new performance page. Obviously, you guys as members get access up to date live as they happen, all the trade statistics. Uh, but we've also got another page here. If you just go to any page on our site, click on performance. 
We've got this perfor performance page, which totals up. Uh, this is for 2017. 64 closed trades, average profit 127 bucks, winning percentage over 87%. And then we just break it down by month, showing the uh, close date, symbols, contracts, strategy traded, uh, monthly totals. So you can see we June, July, August, September, October, November, and then at the end of each month, we'll, we'll total this up. So December will be coming soon. So hope you like that. Good little addition going into the new year. Uh, let's go back to the alerts. So that was FXI. Uh, that was this one here. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade where we uh, uh, bought back a strangle in XRT. So we closed one of our strangles, made over 50% of max profit on that piece, still holding the 44 puts and 44 calls, which is an adjusted strangle. And, uh, and as I mentioned, we'll be rolling this piece by next week. Uh, IV percentile was currently at 66. And then the last trade and the one that we did today was also an XRT where we opened a, another strangle. So implied volatility, as you see here, it, it was at 66, but it popped back up today up to 75 at the time we put this on. And so we put on another strangle. So if we go to XRT, take a look, you can see the IV pop back up there. Go to the analyze tab. As, of course, we just put it on, so still very centered. And then our other piece is the 44 straddle, basically, uh, which was a strangle, but it's been adjusted into a straddle. And we'll look to roll this to February next week. Once we get under that 21 days, once we get under that three weeks to expiration, remember on these on these uh, uncovered, these strangles, straddles, we like to we like to roll them to the next expiration because as we get closer to expiration, that gamma or that risk really starts to accelerate. So uh, we've, with the back testing and from our trading experience, have come to the come to the realization that uh, the sooner we roll, the better. So kind of in that two to three weeks to expiration uh, is when we'll roll. So we'll get that done next week. Some of the other positions that we have on uh, forward slash ES, which is the S&P futures. So we've got two pieces on here. We've got a, uh, a short call spread, which used to be part of an iron condor, so need a little bit of down movement to benefit that piece. And then we've got a long put vertical. Let me reset these. We've got a long put vertical, which is just in our portfolio, strictly for that hedge, strictly for that uh, downside bias. And so we need some downside to benefit that piece. Uh, Natty Gas, we've got two iron condors in here. We've got this one where you can see price has breached our upside break even. Uh, so I did get a question, you know, why, why haven't we adjusted this yet? Well, part of the reason is we just put it on, we've got a lot of time left. And if you look at just the untested side, the puts, you can still see we got a little bit of premium left in there. So we're at about $160. There's a total of $200 of total profit in that piece. So that's in this kind of situation where we've got this amount of time, we just put it on, Sometimes I like to give it a little bit more time to get back in range, especially when there's a decent amount of premium still left in here. Now, if it stays here or continues higher in the next week, we will definitely make that adjustment. But for now, we're just gonna give it a little bit more time. And then we've got this other iron condor on here, which is fairly centered. So Nat, it, it, this one was actually starting to break, uh, get close to breaking the break even to the downside. But we've just had a huge rally uh, last few days in that gas, getting that piece back into range. So continue to monitor that. Need a little bit more theta decay to happen, time to pass before we book a profit there. If we look at the implied volatility, uh, UNG is the corresponding ETF, uh, just staying really high. So nat gas has just been a nice, nice vehicle to trade with that high implied volatility, giving us additional credits when we enter those trades. So we'll continue to trade nat gas for the time being. Went over the notes, went over soybeans, uh, wheat. So we've still got a position, two positions on in wheat. Uh, we've got this iron condor here, which is uh, got about 150 bucks a profit, want a little bit more, so a little bit, slight more up movement to book that piece. And then we've got another iron condor where price is kind of at the other side of its range down here. So hopefully we can book the profit in the other one and then uh, you know this might bounce back a little bit and we can book a profit there as well. 
Similar to soybeans, we're, we're working our way back in this nicely, almost back to break even in wheat. And so hopefully come out with uh, some, some profits there in the next cycle or two. We've got Costco. So this is one where we put on a post earnings short put. So uh, they announced earnings here. Costco had a big move up above its expected move. And what typically happens is price will stay above that level, trade sideways to grind higher. In this case, it has dipped. Uh, nothing to nothing to be you know concerned about, and that's why I kept it on. In fact, you know, looking at looking at this, if it can hold above that 185 mark, you know, I think we're we're good there. Uh, I looked at, and obviously we need a little bit more up movement to benefit that piece. You know, if we can get back to the kind of the 195 level. In, in Costco, we'll book that profit and, and be out of that one. DIA, we've got two pieces here. We've got an iron condor, which let me click off these two. So it's hanging out near the upper end of the range. No need to adjust or anything yet. Just need a little bit of down movement in DIA to benefit that. And then we've got this other piece of what was an iron condor, which is now just the call vertical. So need a little bit of downside to benefit that piece as well. EWW I mentioned, IBM. So this is a trade that we put on and has been adjusted. Uh, we're actually profitable in this trade now. Uh, didn't I wanted to get a little bit more profit. So if we can get a little bit more theta decay, we haven't get, gotten any implied volatility contraction. So if we get a bit of implied volatility contraction in the next week, that'll, uh, that'll push our profits up in this one and we'll book this one. Uh, IBM releases on the... 18th. So we've got, you know, about 18 plus days before um, before they announce earnings. I will not hold this through earnings, so definitely want to be out before that point, but hoping just to squeeze a little bit more profit out of this one. It shows 182, but after rolls and adjustments, we're up uh, we're up about 50 bucks on the trade, but would like to get a little bit more. IWM, so we've got this piece here which was part of an iron condor, need a little bit of a down move to benefit that piece. We'll potentially look to add another uh, piece to this trade, add another iron condor in, if implied volatility pops up. It's, it's still, it's decent enough to do it now, but I'd just like to see uh, potentially getting this popped up over that 50 level that we like to see before we sell any more premium in IWM. Microsoft, I mentioned this one. Uh, Q's mentioned that Starbucks. So this was another uh, bullish play that we put in to kind of balance out our deltas. Uh, hasn't worked out yet, but uh, just down a little bit. Need a little bit of up movement in Starbucks to benefit that piece. So really back up to that 59 level, uh, we'd probably be able to book that profit. So we'll just kind of hold on and wait to see in Starbucks. But again, one of the reasons we added that was to add some of that long delta back in our back in our portfolio. We we don't want to we always want to keep short delta. We always want to have a short tilt, a short a short bias in our portfolio. But we're getting getting a little bit too short. So having that long delta in there is a benefit to the overall portfolio. XLU we've got a butterfly on in XLU. Uh, so you can see here we got a little bit of profit, a little bit of down movement, a little little bit more uh, contraction in implied volatility to benefit that. And then I mentioned XRT. So that's all the positions. That's all the trades from the week. Everybody have a great weekend. New Year's is Monday, so the markets are closed. We will not be doing our live broadcast uh, due to the holiday and, and the market being closed. But we will be back with you Tuesday. Happy New Year. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you then.